why the sudden halving every four years? I understand that the Bitcoin reward per block has to be a decreasing function, such that the sum of all rewards would be finite, like 21 million after 100 years. But why not choose a simple decreasing function that would smoothly go to zero? Isn't it inconvenient that every four years the profitability of miners suddenly decreases, or otherwise fees suddenly have to increase in order to compensate? You know, that's a question that's been asked many, many times. Um, why uh, Satoshi did it that way? Why not have a smoothly decreasing function and instead having this step function, where currently, for example, the 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 production of bitcoins, the issuance of bitcoin on the blockchain every ten minutes is twelve and a half bitcoin. So twelve and a half for four years, and then in twenty twenty, boom, it goes down to six and a quarter, gets divided by half. This halving function. Well, part of it is that's the way Satoshi built it. And once it was built and once it was in progress, there's very little incentive for miners um, to change that. And there's very little desire for anyone to change that fundamental function. Um, because obviously, by postponing the pain of a step function all of the four years up to that step decrease, you're getting the full amount. So you're not getting a gradual decrease, which means that it, it does give kind of an early advantage to those who are mining now versus um, in the future. But um, one way to look at it is that despite the fact that it's a step function, because it is broadly known that the profitability will drop by exactly half, every four years, and because that's known well in advance, you know, we know exactly how that step function is going to work out uh, all the way to the year 2140. Um, miners effectively build their operational models to account for that. So no one's surprised by this. The market already prices in that consideration uh, years before it actually happens. So from an operational perspective, Miners are already adjusting for the profitability that's going to happen after the halving, um, up to a year before the halving. And, um, investments in infrastructure, operational costs, electricity costs, etc., are all taken into consideration, knowing that this is going to happen. And, and so the market ends up pricing this in, so that when it actually happens, um, not much changes, because the network was already ready for it. So that's the fundamental difference between the halving of Bitcoin, for example, and say a sudden change in the interest rate of a fiat currency, which is unexpected, um, and the market has to adjust. In that scenario, the market doesn't know. There's a probability, and that probability is uh, appropriately accounted for in the pricing of, of a currency, but um, in Bitcoin, it's not a probability; it's a certainty, and it's a certainty that is known well in advance, and therefore people can plan for it. So, why did it not happen this way? Because that's not how Satoshi did it, and once it was done, it was done. Um, could it have been better with a stepped decrease? Well, there are other blockchains where that is the case, um, and you know, the it's it's a mixed bag. I don't know that. Uh, this is a particularly uh, big disadvantage uh, of Bitcoin. It, so far, what we've seen is that the the um, uh, two halvings that have happened have been largely uneventful. If, if anything, they've caused an increase in the value of, of Bitcoin right after the halving. So it doesn't seem to be a problem. Vladimir asks, what trends in the Bitcoin ecosphere do you think will be emerging in the long run as the block reward will be getting smaller and smaller? Will there be less miners? Will security be compromised as a result? Will transaction fees skyrocket to support miners, etc? Uh, you know, honestly, none of the above. Um, I, I think that as block rewards get smaller, as Satoshi predicted in um, both the paper and many of his writings. Um, fees are going to have to uh, replace the reward. However, those fees may come from more transactions or uh, more bigger transactions that aggregate things that are on the second layer. Um, 
And the value of Bitcoin may be very different than it is today. And that may mean that miners can be compensated through that. And quite honestly, if we have um, less mining than we have right now, if we have less proof of work than we have right now, that doesn't make the system insecure. We've been growing at such a ridiculously exponential rate in terms of the total mining power that um, you know, Bitcoin was secure uh, two years ago, and two years ago, it ninety percent of the mining we have today didn't exist. So we've been going at a uh, order of magnitude increase every two years, and at that rate, um, making the network ten times more secure uh, doesn't mean that it wasn't secure before. And if we did have a reduction of miners, there are levels of security with proof of work that we had in the past that are perfectly capable of maintaining the security of the network. So I don't think that we have any major problems. Historically, every time there's been a halving, that has affected the long-term price by increasing the price of uh, Bitcoin. And um, it's mostly been a non-event. The halving is uh, something that you can predict with um, Certainty, but not accuracy, uh, years in advance, and with uh, somewhat accuracy as you get closer and closer to the event. And then, of course, it does happen on the exact block you expect it to happen. So the entire market prices that in with increasing level of accuracy as you get closer to the event. And so do the miners in their operating models and profit models. And it becomes a non-event. Uh, in the end. I think it's going to continue to do that. 